Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a brand new optic that's on the market this year, uh, this summer in fact, and that is the Neo Optics HH1. They're, a lot of people are calling this a contender to the EOTech. Has very much an EOTech design, so let's get into it. So for full transparency, Neo Optics did send this out to the channel for me to review. I've had it for about six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. Um, right in that area, I have about 500 rounds on it and uh, I have no other monetary affiliation with Neo Optics. They didn't send me ammo for this review. They didn't uh, pay me for this review, anything like that. Um, so take that for what it's worth. As always, you're going to get the most honest and unbiased opinion I can possibly give on any product. With that said, pause the video now and leave a comment down below, a prediction of, is this optic going to be an actual contender to EOTech or is this just another cheap Chinese optic that is promising a lot but delivering little? Let me know what you think your predictions are down below. Uh, there are three channels that I'm going to mention in this video. I'm going to put links to their channels and their Neo Optics videos down below. First one is TN Tactical. Uh, I think that stands for Tennessee, but TN Tactical. He beat the ever-loving crap out of this optic, uh, and it was still on. Today, we're going to be doing my standard drop test, and not only see if it's still on, but the important part is see if it's still zeroed. So we'll be doing that, but go check out his video because he does uh, a bunch of beating the hell out of it. Another is Sacrificial Science. He is an EOTech guy. He's got EOTechs on a handful of his rifles, and he does a pretty decent comparison of the Neo Optics to the EOTech itself. I don't have an EOTech here, so I can't do that. And then, of course, my buddy Chris from the 740. I got to meet Sacrificial Science on Chris's live stream with Neo Optics, um, and Chris has one of these as well. He really likes it. He says a lot of nice things about it. Uh, so I want you guys, because this is such a new optic on the market, um, I just want to sort of get as many people to see comparisons of what people think of this uh, in front of you. So uh, all three uh, great guys, great channels, um, and their own individualistic outlooks on this optic. For me, uh, I think this optic has uh, some really good things going for it, and I think it has some pretty abysmal things going for it as well. Now this is a holographic sight. Uh, one of the reasons, not just the form factor of it, the size and general shape of it that looks like an EOTech, um, it, people are calling it sort of an EOTech contender because it is also a holographic sight and it does have a very similar donut of death with a 65 MOA ring and I believe it's a one MOA dot. Now the glass size is pretty darn big. It is uh, just over an inch, so it's an inch and a quarter wide, or sorry, an inch and an eighth wide, and seven eighths of an inch tall by my measurements. Uh, the body is a 6061 aluminum, which means it is the softer aluminum, but boxy designs like this tend to uh, be pretty rugged, so we will be testing that later. Now the turrets are half MOA clicks. They are right here on the side, uh, flathead. One of the things to point out is that everything on this is a flathead, uh, which is nice. You don't need any special tooling. If you have a Leatherman or like a Gerber or a basic toolkit in your truck or something like that, you can do all the adjustments, tightening and things like that with this. It takes a CR123A battery right here. This screws off by hand real easy. Um, tightens down you can use a screwdriver if you want and then on the opposite side it has two rubberized soft touch buttons now the uh, it has a bunch of brightness settings and it has night vision settings the brightness setting on it the brightest brightness setting on it is really 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 bright if you're in a dim environment um, so on some videos like Sacrificial Sciences video on TN uh, uh, Tacticals video. 
Uh, every time the reticle is shown, it's in a shaded or dimmer environment and it looks very, very bright. Out here in the broad sunlight of the Arizona, Southwest Arizona desert, uh, its brightest setting is kind of bright. Um, when I, the sun is right there, when I do this, let me turn it on and turn it all the way up, which will be another problem I talk about in a second. Uh, when I do this, I can see it. I can see it fine. I get sunlight showing into it and it slowly just disappears. So um, looking onto the shaded backdrop, which is the mountainside because the sun is behind the mountain right now, uh, looking onto the shaded backdrop of the mountain, it's plenty bright. Uh, but once I get into a brighter area, like into the blue sky or even near the sun, uh, it does fade away a bit. Now the battery life of these is 750 hours. I know it sucks, but it doesn't suck as bad as EOTech. So uh, EOTech's battery life is rated at, I think six or 650. So they're calling for another hundred uh, hours of battery life out of this, which if they can beat EOTech, that's been one of EOTech's biggest downfalls is their really, really, really bad battery life. Um, good for them. Now the glass clarity and quality, the glass quality is meh at best. Uh, it's not like super clear. Um, like I can, even without the tint to it, it looks like I'm looking through, um, slightly used plexiglass. If any guys have that have ever looked at like, uh, especially during COVID when everybody had those plexiglass dividers and stuff like that, and there was just a slight fog or a slight miscoloration between you and, uh, uh, the products or you and the, the employee behind the counter. I, that's what I, that's how I feel. I'm looking through this. Like there's, there's something a little off about it. Now there's no fisheye, there's no wobble, there's no magnification distortion or anything like that. But the uh, quality, the clarity, I should say, is just not quite there. The tint of it is something a little different than what we're all probably used to with a red dot. And that is instead of a bluish green hue, uh, it has sort of a brown, a yellowish brown hue which is something I'm not super used to, but that's what it is in this. We should talk about the comparison between something like this, a holographic sight, and a red dot. So what a red dot does, a red dot has an emitter, usually in the back of the optic, that bounces up to the front glass and then back into your eyeball. This holographic sights have, has a laser that hits reflective different surfaces and bounces all over the damn place in there and then finally projects onto the glass that you're looking at. And this is supposed to create sort of a floating reticle, um, sort of a floating reticle appearance. And I say sort of a floating reticle appearance because I don't notice the difference between looking through a holographic sight with a circle dot and a red dot sight with a circle dot. Um, I'm going to read you a couple things that the Neo Optics website has that I don't know. I, I look at it as sort of sales pitch stuff. Um, they're things that I don't uh, necessarily agree with when it comes to using this optic. So going to my cheat sheet here it says advanced technology projects a holographic reticle, which is more complex, like a circle dot, which is common in red dots. So uh, they're, they're already claiming that their reticle is more complex than other things out there and appears to float in air. Now, when I look through a red dot, to me, it appears to be floating within that window, right? When I look through a holographic site, to me, it appears to be floating in that window. Um, so I don't see a difference there. Um, then it says faster target, target acquisition. The reticle stays focused at the same point as your target, making it easier to aim quickly. Um, red dots do the same thing. That's, you know, like circle red dots, like hollow suns and stuff like that. They all do the same thing. Uh, so I don't know what that's all about. Super performance in any light. Unlike red dot sights, our holographic reticle remains visible and sharp even in low light conditions. 
dawn, dusk, or deep forest. You'll always have a clear sight picture, and with our night vision mode, you can use the HH-1 with night vision goggles to acquire your target with clear confidence in blackout conditions. Um, so those are the three things I wanted to hit because um, these are all inferences, or uh, you know, they're, they're insinuating that red dots don't do these things. Uh, there are many, many, many red dots on the market with night vision capability, very, very capable night vision capability. Um, and um, as far as the red dot, circle dot, staying focused versus this staying focused, sharp and clear, we're going to get into that in a second. So that is not to say that, that this doesn't do the things that they're saying on the website. That's not to say that at all. Um, I read that and then spoke about it after because I wanted to make it clear that these are more or less sales tactics because uh, all the things that they claim this is doing and infer that it's doing better or over somebody else is just not true. Um, all of those things are the same things you find with any red dot. So let's get into the reticle itself. This reticle has a shitload, an annoying amount of flicker, but only through uh, another lens. So being through uh, my camera or this camera, you know, my cell phone or this camera, it flashes continuously. And so uh, it definitely has some refresh issues, uh, but I don't see them to my eye. Uh, EOTech guys, you guys are used to this donut of death that's a little fuzzy, right? It's very, very bright, but a little fuzzy. Um, not quite as defined as a circle dot in, say, a hollow sun, something like that. The reticle in this is considerably worse. Um, I call I, I wouldn't call this reticle fuzzy. I would call it granular. Uh, and what I mean by granular is that if I were to take a piece of paper and take a pin and all around it, right, to create the circle and dot, and then shine a light through it. That is what this reticle looks like. This reticle looks like it's a bunch of dots that have columnated to make a ring, um, and it's not defined at all. It's not clear at all, um, and it's not crisp at all. Uh, it's an extremely annoying reticle to use. Now remember what they said on their website, sharp, focused, crisp, clear, all that stuff. Um, it, a, a, a red dot reticle, like for instance, a hollow sun 507, something like that, or a 510, uh, these are very sharp red dots. And the only way I've been able to get them to bloom or even be fuzzy at all is by taking the picture and zoom, 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 zoom to the point where it's distorted and then I can get it to come close to being as unusable and unclear as this reticle. Now, that also seems to be a optic to optic to optic issue because my buddy Chris, he says that he thinks the reticle is fine. Uh, he can see it very clearly. Yes, it is fuzzy. Um, so I don't know if it's Chinese quality control that is because one tends to look different than the other than the other or whatever, but um, uh, yeah, this this has nowhere near the clarity of a circle dot out of a red dot. So now that I have shit all over this optic, how does it actually function and hold up in accuracy and abuse tests? I have about 500 rounds through it thus far, and it has not lost zero in regular use. So keep that in mind. It has not lost zero in regular use. Uh, but not everybody buys an optic for regular use. Um, there are people out there that I have seen buy $50 red dots off Amazon. They put it on their shit hits a fan rifle and they think they're going to go into fucking combat with it. Um, so I have to assume that people are going to put this on a rifle and expect it to take the abuse. So let's do that now. So I have it mounted up. I need to turn the optic on. Uh, now is a good time to mention that this supposedly has auto shut off technology in it. It does not have auto on, but it has auto off. Um, the website claims 30 minute auto off. I've left this sit for well over an hour, undisturbed, 
and it's never shut off for me. So I have to manually shut it off every time, manually turn it on. Um, is that a big deal? We've spent, we spent years and years and years with optics having to do manual controls, even though auto on, auto off is extremely common these days. Um, one of the negatives about this is that when you turn it on, which it's on, it goes to a, uh, what I would just call their standard or their default setting, which isn't very bright. I have to, it doesn't remember where you had your setting last and uh, that's annoying. So let me, right now, this is what I'm talking about. And I can't, I have tried and tried and tried to look through the glass with cameras to show you this. I can't see the center dot on my brown cardboard target right now, which means I have to turn the dot up in order to see the aim point, which also means that the dot is bigger, which means I will be less accurate. Uh, anybody that knows anything about shooting with a dot at all knows that when you're doing zeroing or accuracy, you want the reticle as low as possible, as dim as possible, because it becomes as fine as possible when you do that. So I have five rounds of M855 in this. This is my Anderson Frontline 11.5 and I am at 36 yards. So let's take a look at this. All right, let's go down range, take a look at that. So at 36 yards, I would expect to keep a bit better group than this. I've kept better groups than this with that rifle. Um, but again, I have to have it so bright that the center reticle gets very big. The center reticle was probably this size uh, or close to this size, at least in my view, uh, when I was shooting. So I one, two, three, four, five in a two inch group right there. So. Clear, the dot or reticle is on. Let's step back here a little bit so you can see the drops. I'll give it its fair shake here. It's, there's a couple big rocks here. Let me just kick these out of the way a little bit. All right, so standard drop test. One on each side, one on the top from shoulder height. So. Right side of the gun. Left side of the gun. And very top of the optic. All right, it is still on, glass is not cracked. Let's see if it held zero. Same five, five rounds of M855. Get this tightened up in here. And All right, let's check that out. So this is the first group, that two inch group that I was zeroed at with that ammo. This is where I was shooting this last time. And I have a very similar size group, but it is three inches off to the left, which means that at a hundred yards, we're talking about six, seven inches of shift to the left. And it's directly to the left as well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop it again. If it shifts some more, if it shifts some more, then we know absolutely what the issue is. So same spot, right? Same three drops. One, 
two, three. All right, still on, no cracks, anything like that. Let's heat this thing back up. Five more rounds of M855. I'm going back to the bottom target. All right, let's check that out. All right, so first group, second group, there's the shift. Third group, it shifted even more. It shifted really almost twice what it did last time. So there is definitely a uh, problem with this optic when it comes to an abuse test and keeping zero. There's no doubt about it. Once it shifts, it seems to be keeping a group, the similar size group, every time but it has shifted twice what it did the first time in the second drop drop test so where do i land on the neo optics hh1 um, i applaud neo optics for having the nuts to try to go up against a behemoth like eotech um, they definitely have the uh, the optics market for holographic optics uh cornered they are the big dog and they are going to be very very hard to compete with on a budget level and this being neo optics first try at it um, i think well it can only get better because there are a ton of things in this that i don't know that it can get worse now if you're still here we're going to talk price uh, to the youtube sensors this is not regulated goods this is i'm not selling this firearm any of that stuff so get off my back i'm just giving the viewers the information they need to make an educated decision uh, if they actually want to buy this thing. Um, that right now on their website, as of an hour ago, right before I started recording this video, it was $330. With that said, a week ago, it was $300. So um, I don't know if that price is going to start steadily going up uh, or not. It has a retail MSRP of $500, which is way ridiculous. Uh, for an optic like this. At that point, you just buy an EOTech, get the best one out there, and you're done. Um, for a range toy, for something that you want a nice big window, which is probably the only uh, positive I have to say about this, other than the durability of the housing, is that it's got a massive window. It's got a massive window. With that said, so does the Holosun 510C, and it has a better reticle in every imaginable way. Um, and it's actually, right now on Amazon, like $10 cheaper than this. And it's a proven optic. Uh, so I really, again, applaud Neo Optics for giving this a shot. Um, it's nowhere near ready to be a contender for or against EOTech. But as a range toy, if you want something like this uh, and you want to support a Las Vegas company, which they are in Las Vegas, they're Chinese made, but they're in Las Vegas, um, check it out, right? Uh, check it out for yourself. So that's it for me for the Neo Optics HH1. Noble effort, but a failed one. I appreciate everybody out there watching. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell and all that stuff. Uh, did your prediction at the beginning come true? Did your prediction at the beginning come true? Uh, there, of course, there's some things in here that I didn't know how it was going to work because I'd never done a drop test with it and things like that before. Um, but this thing definitely has some pretty, pretty, pretty bad issues uh, that I hope in the Gen 2 they get fixed. If you want to support the channel, you can do that by, again, like, share, subscribe, hit, but become a member of the channel. You get members only previews and members only posts and things like that. I do appreciate it. It's very inexpensive and it helps out the channel a bunch, especially since YouTube tends to 
screw with our monetization. YouTube tends to screw with our views and things like that. So uh, any help is awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.